Hi, I'm Aaron Swarovski. And I'm Austin Shaw. This is Between the Keyframes. This week's episode, we're going to be talking about kind of an intro to professional practices. Now, this is something that you teach, so um, you have a nuanced kind of agenda for us. And when I was looking at it, I was really like, wow, this is this is a lot of episodes because once we get into like little things, there's a lot of granular stuff to talk about. All right. All right. Where should we start? Well, I like definitions. I like words and what they mean. Mm -hmm. So I have a definition for professional. The noun definition one, a person engaged or qualified in a profession. Definition Mm -hmm. two, a person engaged in a specified activity as a main paid occupation rather than as a pastime. So uh, that's something I usually will start a class with that with students. I'm like, let's talk about what is a professional. And, and yeah. you know, the, the, the slang way of saying it is like we get paid. We get paid to be professional designers, right? Like yeah. that's what a professional designer is. It's someone who gets paid. It's not just a yeah. hobby. It's not something that we just do for – I mean hopefully we're having fun when fun. we do it. But yeah. it's, it's what supports our, our livelihoods and mm-hmm. – um, there's and, – and just I think that idea too of like, well, what does that mean? What does it mean to be a professional? Well, I think it's a little different in every context, but it gets to your point of like the exchange of goods and services. <laughs> you are – you're – for a fee, you are giving creative services and your time. And sometimes you bill for that differently. Sometimes you bill for that on an hourly basis or a daily basis. And sometimes it's a per project basis. There's a lot of nuance as to like how it can shake out. But at its core, it's there's an exchange of goods and services. Right. Money. Did you have that sense like when you were a student? No. I don't I didn't either. No. You know, I mean, in a very vague way. OK, somebody's going to pay yeah. me to do something. But right. it wasn't like, you know, certainly not the. Even that idea of like the like what you just said, the exchange of goods and services, right? Like, yeah, I was just like, someone please pay me (laughs) to make things. Well, when a plumber comes to your house, you expect your pipe to not be leaking when they leave. Right. (laughs) So, like, there there has to be like outcome attached to that as well, and we have to think about that, you know. I think. Absolutely. There's no, a professionalism absolutely. that goes along with that. Because, you know, at one point we had professional as both a noun and an adjective, right? right? And I think that's really important to talk about. Like, yes, you're a professional, a professional person, but you also behave professionally. Right. So I have that. So as an adjective, professional, relating to or belonging to a profession, right? So you're a part of that profession. Of it's something. being in that, acting in that way. Right. And so there's a lot of nuance to it. So a lot of that has to do with something as simple as what you wear to work. You know, Um, if you work at an advertising agency or a studio like mine, you can wear whatever the fuck you want. Like, (laughs) in fact, the more eccentric you are, probably the more interesting we're going to think you are. Right. Like, um, but you could do that. But if you work at like Accenture or... um, United or Boeing, like your bosses are essentially like right. engineers, you know, like that you might be in a marketing department, but there's, you know, you're going to be existing in a different paradigm. Absolutely. I remember I went to visit um, National Geographic Channel. I was doing projects for oh. them back in like the I don't know, late 2000s. And I um, was down in D.C. I was visiting some relatives and I was like, hey, do you guys want to go to lunch? And so I met them for lunch and. Um, Mm -hmm. and they were all wearing like polo collared shirts. And I was like, I was like, I was like, do you guys have a dress code? And they're like, yeah, (laughs) they were like business casual. It's a corporation, you know, it was a business casual. Is, is Nat Geo a part of Turner? I think Fox. Fox. Okay. Well, also a very conservative network. Right. Right. So that's something that has to be just at least thought about in this professional practices arena. So like the difference between a more corporate job and a more boutique job. Absolutely. You know? And that doesn't mean the work's that different. 
No, not right? at all. Right. It's just what are the the kind of expectations of that particular mm-hmm. place? I remember when I um started working as a as a creative director, feeling like I should probably get some like collared shirts. <laughs> and I remember I got <laughs> I think I just had t- I mean I've been worn t-shirts. That was my that's what I wore forever. Oh, yeah. Um, and and I remember I thought I was getting really fancy. I got like a penguin t sh- like a penguin polo with a collar, right? And it's basically just a polo. It's like a polo but like a little more of a hip polo. And I thought I was really upping my <laughs> my professional <laughs> Dress code, right? Um, yeah. But then when I went to teach at uh, at the SCAD, there's there's a dress code, right? And, oh, and it's, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And, and I was always um, wondering why you were in, in button downs and like diapers. right, right. Yeah, no um, no jeans, <laughs> no, no t-shirts, jeans. no jeans, no t-shirts, really no sneakers. You know, no so sneakers. it was. Um, so I I went to the the Brooks Brothers outlet store That's and I started. Else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, because they have these non-iron button downs, right? Oh, yeah. So I, the, the I have this, this color. Yeah, totally. Because it's just like, so I, I got a bunch of those and oh then I got God. a bunch of like slacks and, and um, I kind of would try to push the line of like, like dressy sneaker, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Or, or throw like on my bands. Yeah. But at the same time too, like especially my first year, I wore a tie the first year of teaching there because... Okay. One, I just thought it was fun. It was like I was playing dress up a little bit because it's like, all right, I spent the bulk of my career to that point wearing t-shirts to work t-shirts, and dressing yeah. like I was in sixth grade, right? And <laughs> and also I'm like, oh, cool, I get to like dress up. And I got these fun like like suit oh. vests, right? And I wore a lot of those fun suit vests. Oh, I, and, yeah, um, I remember seeing – it's interesting when we were doing like the montage for our teaser, I was like – why do you, why are you, I was never thinking, like, why the fuck are you dressed like this? But you know what? When I first started, it was kind of a good thing it. because I've, I've kind of, ooh, nice pin. I I'm, know, I gotta um, send you some. I am kind of a, ba- I got a baby face, right? I mean, now I, I can grow a big old beard, but so it makes me look mm-hmm. older. But when I shave this, I look like I'm like 12 years old. So when I first started teaching, I mean, like everyone mm-hmm. thought, I, you know, I just look like a student, even though yeah. I was like 30, 30 something at the time. I looked like I right. was like a young 20. And so wearing this, you know, wearing the, the dress. Made you the feel dre- the part. Yeah. yeah. And it was like a branding thing. Like the tie helped to kind of let the students know that I was actually their professor and not just another student. What else are we going to talk about? There's lots of areas of professional practice that we're going to get really, really, really deep on over right. the course. And it's going to be like our professional practices series. So one is kind of understanding where you're applying, how do you decide that, um, all of that. Um, so that then, idea of areas of practice, yes, I think is, areas is a good way to, to frame it. To right. sum it up. <laughs> <laughs> where Shut do you the want fuck to work? up. What kind, of, what kind of job do you want? What Because there are different types. That's another thing I didn't yeah. really know. Like it's just there's – and when I say naivety, I don't mean it in a negative at all. It's just yeah. a normal part. I was very naive because I just didn't know. I hadn't mm-hmm. been exposed to that yet. And, Absolutely. And, you know, but something I try to do in, in my class is to – talk about this idea of areas of practice and, and, right. and I have a little, a little chart, a little infographic. Um, Let's get it. There we go. So on this vertical axis, we're looking at, uh, what did I do? Full-time up top. So a full-time job on the, on the other side of that is freelance, right? So there's like, you can work in a full-time capacity, work in a freelance capacity. Um, and then there's this horizontal axis where we go from consistency to variety. Right. So do you, are you the kind of person who likes to work on the same type of thing? Like to be, you know, so working in-house at a brand, right? right. If you work for Nike, you're going to be working on Nike. On that's, Nike. you're going to, you know, there's going to be variety within that, but that's mm-hmm. still like you're working for that brand versus yep. working at, you know, Swarovski or any kind of creative agency. You're yeah. going to be working on a lot of it. You might be working variety. on Nike one week. You might be working on, you know, something totally different the next week. And right. Even in a day, right? Like you might be working on oh, multiple yeah. projects at the same time for different brands because that's the gig, yeah. you know? Um, so with this chart, like what I actually have students do, like me, I'm like here, <laughs> right? No, I'm a freelancer who works on lots of different kinds of things, right? Like, so, so you're on the like, other side. You're on variety side. 
Am I? Oh, yeah, thanks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put this back in the mistakes episode. There we go. Um, <laughs> I'm like we're here, and I actually I will I will put this up on the yeah. on the wall, right? And then students will go up, and they'll kind of be like, "I'm over. I'd like to be here, or I'd like to be, yeah. you know." And let them kind of think about. And I always say it. It's like, look, just because you say that now, like that's not. It might change. Yeah. Right? This isn't fixed, set in stone. But if you can have at least a sense of where you'd like to go, totally, you could you could save a lot of energy by not targeting some of these mm -hmm. other areas that you're not as interested in. Yeah. Now, I think it's important, really important to think and say, it's like, look, in the beginning, you just got to get your foot in the door. Get some, a job. Somewhere, yeah. anywhere, like do anywhere. something. So you might want to be um, a full time at a brand, right? Right. But all you're getting is, you know, opportunities to do some, some junior mm -hmm. freelance mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's fine. Do it. Right. Like yeah. that'll get you need to get your foot in the door to mm -hmm. eventually get wherever it is you want to get to. So we talked about what kind of jobs we talked about where. Oh, yeah. What do you do? <laughs> what does a designer actually do? Yeah. What's the role? Right. How do you fit? Yeah. And I was actually thinking as you were talking about consistency to variety, I was thinking, you know, there's also something to be said for having such a specific job where you just lay out type. They just look at you as a type layout person versus like the jack of all generalist. And, uh, yeah. you know, that's interesting. Like it's a little more nuanced later on in your career, but the idea of specialization versus generalist could be another kind of that like X axis in that, in that graph there. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. Um, but what do they do? Contributing, contributing to a creative, creative team. team. How so maybe what is that? What's a team? What's a creative team, Erin? What does that look like? Right. Yeah. Well, you have all these different. We're going to actually do an episode that probably isn't a professional practices episode, but an episode that really helps you understand the hierarchy of our genre, where we talk about creative directors and art directors and creative leads and senior designers, senior motion producers, designers, producers, interns, interns like <laughs> ad admin stuff. We're going to oh, talk about sales. that. Sales, PR, PR all, all that. We're going to show all you. All the jobs. And that's part of this, prof I guess it is part of professional practices because it's the paradigm you're going to exist in. You are a piece of this big ship and you're rowing and you're doing your job, but there's got to be other people doing their jobs too. And then you also have to understand that like a creative director in our field is different than a creative director in advertising or, and, and so it gets a little bit fuzzy, I think, for people because Absolutely. it is the same names. People are saying yeah. the same things, but it doesn't necessarily translate. No, I mean, it's interesting because I think in, in some ways, like an art director, or creative director, yes, they are the lead of the creative, but how that creative plays out very different in, say, production right. design versus motion design versus ad agencies. Totally. So, but we'll, we'll dig we'll into that. that. I was thinking about when you were talking about the row, like the ship where you're rowing and, you know, the creative director is like the person who's yelling, row, row, row. What is that person <laughs> called? The, the... Oh, on, a, on like a crew team? Isn't that like crew. the coxswain or something? I think so. I wanted you to say you it. You didn't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you got what me. Is that well okay. played. Well played, um, Sharofsky. <laughs> okay. I'm being very professional. Yes. You wrote this one. I think this is really great. What is my value proposition? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's like like day one of the class. Like exercise one is for students to mm -hmm. write a reflection, sort of a journal type reflection to share with the whole mm -hmm. class of like, what's your value proposition? Yeah. What is it that you bring? What are you bringing to the table? What are your strengths? What are your skills? Mm -hmm. And can you identify those accurately? <laughs> and can you communicate <laughs> those in a way that's, yeah. you know, with some intention, again, it's another way to yeah. frame like – because it's so funny. It's like, oh, another one of these memes. Um, 
it's oh, I should find it, but it just popped in my head. It's like that thing when someone asks you to explain like what you do or like explain yeah. your strengths, and all of a sudden you get that you just freeze, deer in headlights, yeah. sweat pouring off your face, right? And all, you forget how to talk. <laughs> Like, well, I mean, like when I when I'm I? in an elevator with somebody, like the elevator pitch. If yep. you're in, like, if you got like the president of like Universal or something, and you're pitching yourself, like, who are you? Who am I? And like, oh, I'm Aaron Strasky. I'm an emotion design product design driven production company. Whatever. Like, I gotta have that spiel down, and it's gotta be ready right. to go. Succinct, you know? clear, and also like we. Talk, I mean, I feel like this gets to become kind of like a. a a buzzword, but authenticity, I think it being really authentic. Honest, like yeah. you just have to yeah, you, you wanna feel it, right? You want it to be true and you wanna say it in a way that you believe it. Because if you believe it, they're gonna believe it. Like I'm all about honesty and transparency and we just had a pitch. Not a it wasn't a pitch, it was more like a meeting to talk about capabilities to see if they could use us in an interesting way, direct to a brand. Um and they were like, they had a whole ton of questions. It was like a very like professional meeting, <laughs> you know, it was a very financial services company, yada, yada, yada. So we're, we're having this meeting and they were like, so do you do this? And I, we were like, nah, like, if you want, we can like facilitate working with a company, you know, and trust, or we've certainly prepped files for that, but we don't. We don't do that. We don't it's have not the your wheelhouse. They were like, oh, it's so different talking to somebody that's like not like a big agency that tries to pretend to be everything. Yeah, like, we can sure. do that. We can do it. We sure, can why do not? That. Right. And I'm like, no, that's, that's not like what I want to do for my life. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, yes, yeah. if you don't define those borders and parameters for what either you like to do or what you're capable of doing, you know, you might get stuck doing something you don't like to do, or you might get yeah. yourself in over your head trying to accomplish something that's like just yeah. not within your your skill set. Or as simple as it's not this fun. Is like, I've done that. Were, I've done that before, where I'm like, really? oh, I should have said no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like you know, I get myself into. I don't do it as much anymore, but like photo real visual effects, 3D. Mm -hmm. Not my strength. Not my yeah. wheelhouse. Not even necessary. I mean, it's cool. I appreciate it, but like every time I I've agreed to try to do that because I just can't. I can't do it as well. And and the client wants something that looks like a mm -hmm. photograph, but in 3D. And that's, to me, a, a very specialized type of skill set, you know? It and, is, yeah. It's not, it's, you know, you want stylized 3D, you want, you want to, like, you know, turn yeah. a logo into 3D, extrude some type, do some fun, like, like yeah, I'm all over it. But yeah. I get myself into trouble, so I pass. I pass that I on. Pass. I'm like, why don't you, you talk to so-and-so? Why don't you talk to Connie? <laughs> 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 I mean, like, for real. For real. So that's really important. Um, and then what we're going to talk about, and that's along the lines of this value proper proposition, is really, truly having an accurate sense versus an inaccurate sense of your professional value, right? And, and where it's placed in our paradigm. And that's, it gets to what you're talking about. What is my value proposition? But I find it so interesting. And even as when I, when I think about myself as a younger artist, like I didn't understand really the context and I probably appeared to have a very big head because of it. A big totally. ego. Me too. I, when I said totally, but, I didn't mean for you. I meant for me no. as well. <laughs> Cause like, as you, as you get older, I think one of the main thing that happens to you is you realize the more you know, the more you know you don't know, right? right. And you're open to, um, hopefully, like being taught or bringing in other people with those skills to kind of shore up any areas of expertise that you need to cover that you can't. Right. But like that happens over time because, you know, when you come out of school, especially not having really a professional practices class other than how to like make a portfolio and print it out and put it in a leather round book. Uh, <laughs> like that was it. I, you know, mm -hmm. that was yeah, all there, were there no was. Culture, no discussions about culture, no yeah. like real, nothing like that. Yeah. So when you go into this world and everything is, I think for creatives, because the work ultimately that's produced is creative, 
we think we're the most important part of the process. <laughs> right. We're the ones about, making y'all it. Ba- y'all about to get illuminated. <laughs> And, you know, like as a business owner, I can say, yeah, that's a really important part. How you make the pizza is really important. It's got to taste good. It's got to be the best pizza you've ever made. But like, we got to buy dough (laughs) and we got to, you know, get people in the door. And there's other areas. Somebody's got to bring it to your table. There's all these other aspects of running a creative company or a division of a bigger company that's creative that you know is functional so it's just really it all fits fits together together. right right okay you know you got me me think of something when we were talking about that idea of you know what we we don't know what we don't know right that's sort of that naivety and that's that's normal that's natural that's Mm -hmm. a part of the process right and then there becomes as you know, the next stage, at least for me, it's sort of there's it becomes an insecurity around what we don't know. I had oh. where it's like, oh, wait, I don't oh. know that. Oh, then it's like, you know. Yeah. And then that next stage of growth is embracing, embracing not it. knowing. Yes. Because then it's like, oh, wow, I can learn something new. Right. Or just getting excited about like and, – and that's – I don't know if that's like the stages of knowing, three stages of knowing. <laughs> <laughs> no, Maybe. I'm thinking you know – Not knowing, being scared about it, and then being like, cool, I don't know about that. I'm going to figure it out. Yeah, let's figure (laughs) figure this out. Let's figure this out. I don't know if I've talked about this, but like that idea of like crowdsourcing learning with like students, it's fun, right? If they ask me something I don't know, I'm like, let's figure it out. Let's find out. Let's do the research. Let's work on this together. And it becomes fun, right? Which I think, you know, is a good measure of learning. If you're enjoying, you're probably learning. Totally. We're going to talk about interpreting a creative brief um, and problem solving. And this is that. like, what is a what is a brief, right? Oh yeah, what is a brief, right? Yeah, and then like, what are the different ha- stages of problem solving? Right. So everything from concept dev through production and finishing, finishing, and and then how your role in that is ultimately produced. Like, there's efficiency and time and deadlines and. You know, and then finishing strong with meeting your deadlines and being on budget and having your team happy with you and having your client happy with you and cleaning up your project files when you're done, archiving properly, yada, yada, yada. Right. All of that is a, a very big... A lot of diplomacy, a lot of managing relationships. Yep. Okay. So, so that's like understanding the paradigm that your role is going to fit into. And I think that really, really, really important. So not only to become an expert at what you do, but to know that like, hey, you're not the only one doing. There's other people doing and we're all gotta be a team. So, um, okay. So after we get through all that, we're gonna talk a lot about soft skills. I always talk about soft skills. Um, Top line, it's like reliability, communication, attitude, um, just being a good, coworker, human being, you know, all of that stuff that, you know, if you do have a big ego and that supersedes like collaboration, (laughs) it's going to be a hard go, you know, in motion design, because most of it is very collaborative, unless you're like off doing your own thing, artist style, it's just you, but even the greats collaborate, you know, because like, I know my name's on everything, but I'm not the only person doing anything. No, I mean, and even, you know, I've been working remotely solo for a long time now, right? Um, yeah. There's still a ton of soft skills, like oh, a ton, because I got to interact with who I'm working with, right? Mm-hmm. And I have to do that in a way that's effective, that it's got to, you know, we'll get into all that, but yeah, so important. Yeah. So we talked about like preparation to a certain extent, but this is uh, another thing we're going to do a big episode on is what you need to enter the motion design workforce. So preparation, like building a wheel, a wheel, <laughs> building the wheel. You, you need to be able to build a wheel. Build a wheel. Okay. Preferably Just, a wheel of cheese. <laughs> yes. If you can do that, Aaron will hire you. <laughs> I will hire you. 
Those big wheels of like farm are. Very Remember that expensive. I sent you that link when I was like, check yes, this out. It was like a two thousand right. dollar wheel of Parmesan cheese that weighed like eighty pounds, and I was I like, I can't believe this is so expensive. And I was like, that's a lot of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah okay so not building a wheel of cheese or a wheel for your cart it's a real r-e-e-l a real um and we're actually going to do a lot of talking about reels because we have a an episode that's going to be exclusively about us giving feedback to people's reels it's called real time real talk <laughs> yeah, i'm still thinking about the, <laughs> the wheel of wheel. cheese <laughs> Wheel time, wheel time. <laughs> <laughs> we should do some fun gifts. Let's do it. Oh my god! Uh, but I think <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of a time that we uh, we did a um, uh, Sarovsky Labs. We have this weekend workshop series, and just before the pandemic hit, we did a freelancing seminar and. We had all these people come to the office and it was um, us and Joey from School of Motion and we did this thing together. I think it's available online. He had the whole crew film it. He's very professional, that School of Motion. They like kind of are super dialed in like that. Anyway, so we're doing it and man, we proofread this deck over and over and over again. And boom, it pops up and it says freelancing. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome freelancing it's just like the biggest piece of type and the whole deck is spelled wrong <laughs> and so freelancing is a funny word in our studio did you guys have a big laugh big about it or oh was it God. a cringe no all right that's it was good. <laughs> it was hilarious the stakes were low i mean like all you could do is prepare 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 i mean it wasn't like a main title sequence that got delivered yeah. with somebody's name spelled wrong oh fuck that that's like that's Oops. not good <laughs> But this is like, it's just like a workshop in the studio. Yeah, and it yeah, like yeah. proved a point. You got to keep proofing. I mean, we are, and we are human. You know, human. I do that with my students a lot. Like I will, I'm like spell check, <laughs> you know, because when they pitch, when they present their decks and their pitching yeah, concepts boom, boom, and their boom. process book, and I'm just like, boom, typo, boom, boom. kerning, boom, boom. not widow. left a lot, not a line, yeah. widow. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like, and, and it's. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to be like – it's not like trying to be like a horrible bastard, bastard like calling out all the – but it's like, look, like no, there you need are to be tools. like that. You do. Yeah. yeah because it's like, look, no, if you send this to them. your client, it's like no that doesn't look professional. Yeah. To have a no typo. Good. Especially when I'm like, you know, you, we all have – you use an InDesign, spell check, right? The tool's there. Just run you the really, spell check. I can't um, stress enough somebody having a friend that's a good – editor or a good writer in a different discipline to literally look at mm. everything you do. Proof it. Proof it. Proof your website. Proof um, everything. What was the other thing I was going to say is, um, <laughs> oh yeah, when students show up late, I, I had them do a thing. Like I give everyone like a, I give them like pass. one, a free pass. Cause it's like, you know, yeah. there's traffic, things happen. Okay. I get it. Right. But second time they do a style frame. Like I will not be late to class. Style and frame. they have to do it. That's the type style frame, and they have to do oh, a type okay. treatment and make it. I will not be late to class, and and then we would post it to the class Facebook group, and we I would love post that. it. And and um, some of them are like, oh, you know, you're public shaming us. I'm like, well, <laughs> I'm like this is more about again, like how you do anything awesome. is how you do everything. Do everything. So <laughs> if you're gonna roll in late here. You, that means you might be rolling late to your job, and that means you're get fired. So if I can yeah. teach you to treat this, and it's tricky because it's like there's a class they're paying to come to this class. It's right. not like you know I can't fire them, but, yeah, but they're disrupting the class. They're coming. In there's late. that too. They're, That's you know, what it, like you know, other people are learning that also yep. paid for the class. Like if you're going to be I, disrespectful, you're right. yeah. Yeah, and then I got you know. it, it, it. It interrupts my flow, and I, I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> like if I'm late to a meeting and everybody's gotten started, they're starting over because I yeah. just got to the meeting, and that feels really shitty, you right. know. So right, it's it's that's a really important, I think, lesson that there are consequences. <laughs> okay, I love that. So in this preparation class, in this pr preparation um, professional practices episode, we're going to cover. Just getting top line, good reel together, 
what that looks like, where it should be posted and how it can be presented, like on a website, is it Vimeo, YouTube, like depends on all the things. All the places. We we talk about resumes a lot because we, I don't know why we do, but we do. Um, I, I, I like them. I, I, it's I know an important people that document. have never used them. I think the act of writing a resume is maybe even more important than the resume itself. Just that collection of knowledge. It's all anyway. I think it's a good thing, but we'll talk about that in detail. A cover letter. Cover letter. Most intro don't email. Send, slash yeah, cover but it's letter. like an intro introduction email. Um, and again, that that also is going to depend on where you're applying and how you know how they have like we have this like interactive form that happens when you're applying, and it's like tell us a little bit about yourself, like you know put your resume here, put a link to your portfolio here. Is there anything else you'd like us to know? Send us a picture of your pet. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's our process. So it gives you an indication of our culture. But like, it, again, if you're applying at Deloitte or Accenture or something like that, yeah, it might need to be a little bit more traditional. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say um, what might be interesting for us to cover too is just like employable skills Ooh, right, in yeah. the context, right? Like what are those and, mm -hmm. you know, to what degree do they matter? Right. Right? Like typography I think is like huge. Yeah. Huge. <laughs> okay. We'll also talk about your social media presence. So you might think it yeah. doesn't matter. Get one. Get one. Well, get Anti one and be Anti-establishment folks. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I get some students who are just like, you know, they're just not like this. And I get it. And I'm like LinkedIn then. Just have a LinkedIn because you can apply for jobs through yeah. that. Okay. So this has been a good episode. <laughs> yes. And keep it, keep it professional. <laughs> keep it professional. <laughs> well, it's a lot of food for thought. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's nuance to everything and everybody's a unique person and they got to see how they fit into whatever paradigm they want to make for themselves. We're just hopefully here. We're putting ourselves out there to say what we've learned. Yeah. Um, and learning how to navigate these sort of professional waters because it's, there's, yeah. there's different layers to it. And yeah. I think, you know, again, just bringing it back to that, like you want to be mm -hmm. authentic, you want to keep your integrity, right. but you got to kind of understand the landscape and, and, and learn how to, um, I don't know. I lost my thought. Well, you gotta you gotta <laughs> learn how to to a certain extent fit in. Yeah. You know, that's it. Learn how to do that. Yeah, and how to make yourself of service and and not yes. super fucking annoying. Yes, be of service, and that's be of service. no. That's that's probably the thing, and that's what helps me the most is like when I get lost in my ego um, or or just uncertainness. It's like okay, what's the maximum service to this point in the process? If I can right. kind of fall back on that, I can get out of my own way. Right, right. Well, thank you, Austin. It's been a fun day. Thank you, Erin. It's been wheel. Yeah. It's been wheel. It's been wheel. <laughs> <laughs>